yellow, bananas. Brilliant. What's up guys, my name is Phil. Welcome back to Miranda Detailing and welcome to another weekend wash. In today's video, we're going to be playing around with a ton of products and tools. So as you see, I have a bunch of pads in my hand here. We're going to be testing out some of the new Buffing Hero pads, as well as some of the Max Shine pads. We're going to be playing around with one of the Max Shine polishers, an entry-level polisher that is perfect for any budget and any type of detailer. No matter what you need to do with this polisher, you can get it done. We're also going to show you some awesome tools that you can use, like the Max Shine belt, as well as their nice little polishing holder here, which I have mounted in our garage. So let's get started. So guys, like I mentioned, it's a weekend wash. So we're going to be cleaning our own vehicle because it needs it. The pollen is already starting to come out. That's right, pollen. It's mid-March and already it's starting. So we're going to be cleaning up our vehicle because it already has a layer of dust and pollen on it. And we're going to be trying out these new pads. So Max Shine contacted us and was kind enough to send us some stuff. So they sent us some pads to play around with as well as a polisher and the polisher holder and their tool belt. So first off, let's check out the vehicle, see what we need to clean up, and then we'll get to washing it and we'll chat a little bit. So here's the vehicle and it's overcast today, so no sun shots. It's not really bad, but you can definitely see the layer of dust and pollen on the paint. Now, if you remember in one of our last weekend washes, we applied OE tire dressing to all of the tires and it held up really well oh hi mister what are you doing complaining as usual really seriously that's rude yeah you need some grooming yeah, so the tire dressing actually held up really, really well. They still look pretty nice. So wheels aren't horrible, but we'll clean them up. Clean up all these wheel wells and all the bottom portions of the paint here. As you can see, that always gets nasty. Hi. So yeah, it's got some spotting from rain and junk like that on the paint. Wow, you're loud today. You are loud. Oh, there's some swipe marks. I don't even know what that was. So just generally dirty. Oh, now you're following me. Stop following me. Stop following me. Oh gosh. <laughs> you always hit that way too hard. Goofball. So Max Shine also sent us a nice bucket with a grit guard in it. So we're going to use this for the wash. Oh, Mr. seems to approve. Now let's just give it a rinse first. Wow. And we still have technician's choice on the hood here. It looks amazing. So we have technician's choice on the hood and on the roof. And we still have the last coat with a layer of amp on the trunk. So that's still holding up really well. Lithium ceramic slam is on this door. That is amazing. So what should we use for a shampoo? What do we have? Ooh, we have Hyper Wash. We have Dr. Beasy's Ceramic Body Wash. We use that. We're gonna use some of this later. There's the last soap, but I wanna use something with a little bit more cleaning power. Here we go. Let's use Car Pro Reset. You can buy this at Car Supplies Warehouse. So let's grab one of our nice fluffy rag company mitts. and a couple of shots of soap. I'm not being too exacting. That's nice. The water is really nice and warm, so oh, that's really nice. So 
So I hope everybody is safe for the next couple of weeks. Make sure to listen to any of your directions to either stay home or limit contact with people to make sure that you guys are safe. Now I'm gonna wash the wheels after I wash the car. I know, everybody has their own way of doing things if they want to do the wheels first. That's up to you, and you have your reasons. This is just a basic wash. This is just washing my own vehicle, so not a big deal. But here's a tip. After you wash your vehicle, you have all that soap and water in the bucket. Sure, it might be a little dirty, but you're just doing wheels and tires and wheel wells. The bucket's gonna get dirty anyway, so don't worry about that. I'm going to dump most of this into here because it's already sudsy. So then I'm just going to take an all-purpose cleaner, spray down the tires and the wheels and wheel wells, and clean using that. Keep things very simple if you're washing your own vehicle. You don't need to do every single little intricate step if you don't need to. If it's a daily driver, don't obsess over it. Keep things simple. You're just cleaning and protecting your vehicle. If you want to go further, then great, that's up to you. But there's no need to go crazy with all these different chemicals and tools, not unless you're a professional detailer who needs all those tools and products. Keep things simple, keep things basic if you're just doing your own vehicle. Now another nice thing about solvent-based dressings there are pros and cons to them, but look at its durability. It still beads water. It may not look as glossy when it's all dry, but it is protecting the tire really well. All right, so let's clean the rest of these, and then we'll dry off the paint and play around with some more products and tools. Vehicle is now washed and rinsed, and you can still see the beading is awesome. And at least we don't have the sun out to worry about anything drying and worrying about water spots, so I took my time cleaning the tires and the wheels, even though they didn't take long at all. But at least with overcast, you don't have to worry about water spotting issues. So remember, technician's choice was up here. We had the last coat and a layer, or a couple of layers of amp on the back here, so that's still holding strong, and we had uh, the tech choice up here as well. So that's looking amazing. I can't remember what I had on here, but I know I have ceramic slam on the door here. So still holding really, really strong. Now, do you need to get one of these huge drying towels? No, you can just use a small microfiber or a couple of small microfibers. But these nice drying towels do make drying so much easier. So this drying towel is from GT Shine, and this is their large one. It's huge. I should be able to dry the entire vehicle without wringing anything out. So 
The towel is pretty saturated, and I've heard some guys say that it's designed not to be wrung out. It's a towel. You can wring it out if you want. All you need to do is fold it into sections and wring it out section by section. That's all. Is it going to harm anything? No. It's a towel. Come on. It's not a big deal. If it gets oversaturated and you still haven't dried everything in the paint, just fold it into sections and wring it out section by section. It's not a big deal. Don't try to do this. It's too much. Just do it in small sections and you'll be fine. It's a microfiber towel, guys. You can wring it out. Don't worry. Okay guys, so now that the vehicle is washed, it's dried, I'm gonna play around with some products. So I have the polisher here from MacShine. Now this is one of their entry level polishers. It's been out for a long time, it's nothing new. But again, MacShine sent me the polisher to try it out. They also sent this really nice holder. So it's made for a single polisher. You can bolt it onto your wall. I actually have a dual polisher holder in my trailer from MacShine that I love. And they sent over their entry level DA machine. So this thing is pretty basic. It is around $90. I do compare it to say the Porter Cable Polisher or there's a bunch of different ones out there that are pretty much of the same type of design. Now, this thing I've been using for a couple of days now, and I have to say it's actually really, really nice. There are some pros and cons to it uh, that I'll go over, but for an entry level polisher for a beginner or detail enthusiast, this thing is great. You don't have to worry about spending hundreds of dollars on a fancy polisher when you can spend 90 bucks on something like this and it gets the job done. So it does come with a bunch of pads. I'm gonna be using the little blue finishing pad, which the quality on this pad is really nice. I already used it, so it is stained with uh, some of the waxes that I've been using, but it is clean, it's just stained. So the polishing pad itself, this is their finishing pad. They actually have three of them that they sent me. They're compounding, they're polishing, and then they're finishing or they're wax or sealant application pad. It's super, super soft. It's nice and low profile. And the cut on it is really, really nice. It's well made, well constructed, and it doesn't feel like a chintzy cheap type of foam. So same goes with the polisher here. The design of it is really nice. I know you guys have probably seen this design before, and I'm really glad they sent the blue color. That's kind of like my theme. I love this blue and black uh, color of the polisher. So. It's your standard five inch backing plate, which is my favorite. I don't go anything higher than a five inch backing plate because I like to use five and a half inch, maybe sometimes six inch pads, uh, depending on how they're designed. So if we look at the polisher itself, it's a really nice design. It is pretty heavy, but again, I like that. It feels really well balanced. I can hold it in one hand and actually uh, wax a vehicle or polish a vehicle really, really quickly. There are a couple of different cons to it that I guess you can say they're cons depending on how you view it. But I may try doing something to it later. I have seen some guys actually move this button here to the top. That's just something I prefer because I do uh, tend to hold the polisher like this and use my thumb to be able to press on the trigger. So I think you can take it apart and switch it around. I don't know if I'll do that or not because it's not a huge deal, but Maybe if you guys think it's a, it's annoying to have to go over here to press the button, that's up to you. Uh, the dials in the back here have that nice clicking sound, which I really, really like. So um, it's a nice smooth action, but it also clicks on the different dial numbers that you need. So this thing is pretty powerful. It's 900 watts and it does feel a little bit more powerful than say the Porter cable. I don't remember if the Porter cable is 900 watts or not, but the feel and the sound of it are different when I compare it to the Porter cable, which I'm just so used to after 10 plus years. And the sound of the machine too is a little bit louder than the Porter cable. Uh, does have a little bit more of uh, an ear piercing sound. Again, if that's a con, if you want to view it that way, that's up to you. However, working with the polisher is a pleasure. I really, really enjoy using it. So. As mobile detailers, I also have the uh, detailers cord snaps that uh, Tony Ralda from Ralda's Details designed and we're uh, making and selling these together. So if you wanna pick up a pack of these, I'll have a link down below, but I'll show you 
why and how we use these little cord snaps when we are waxing around the vehicle. Now the other pads that I want to show you are from a company called Buffing Hero. So they sent me their three pack of pads. Now these are really interesting. They're five and a half inch on the back here. So that will fit any standard five inch backing plate. But as you can see, they're beveled like this and then they kind of square off, which is nice too, because if they go all the way up to a point, um, those you know edges kind of fray and will flatten out like this over time anyway, and they just don't look good. So this was a nice design to have them beveled and then kind of flatten out at the edges. But low profile, this is their compounding one, so it's pretty stiff. And then you have your polishing one, which this really reminds me of the Roops yellow pad. So we'll be playing around with these pads later. I won't be able to do too much today with these pads. Um, so I just want to show you that we do have them and that we're going to be playing around with them. So we'll make more videos on these pads later. And then we have the black finishing pad. So really nice quality foam as well. Really nice uh, backing on here for the Velcro backing. They don't feel cheap at all and they actually have kind of a nice backbone to them. So I like that they are low profile, like I mentioned. So you do get more power to the pad uh, from your polisher instead of having a super thick pad uh, that will kind of mush down and sometimes you don't get the performance out of them. So if you wanna check out these pads, I'll see if I can get a link uh, for you below and you can purchase some of these pads, but we'll play with these later on. But I also want to showcase the belt. So the Max Shine belt here, um, is very similar to the Detailer's Helper belt. I would suggest a few more additions to this belt. I do like that we have the pockets here, so you can fit your waxes, your polishes, your compounds in this little pocket, and that is really, really handy. It's very, it's very well made, like the construction of it is awesome. And you can also attach a pad to the little Velcro uh, piece that is right here. So this is actually the, um, I guess it's the, the loop side of the Velcro. And of course, this is going to be the hook side or vice versa, I forget which is which, dyslexia. Uh, but anyway, you can attach your pad right here. So if you're switching out pads, you can keep it nice and safe by attaching it right there. So the other pocket that it has is on this side. The only thing is the pocket, this one does feel I don't know, a little bit floppier. I'm not sure what it's designed to do. You can put the bottles like this. You can put other tools and brushes in this pocket here, but you really can't fit a 32 ounce bottle. I definitely suggest if they can make it a little bit larger of a pocket and have it slung maybe a little bit lower, kind of like this one here. Um, that way you can fit a 32 ounce bottle. So that would be a little bit more handy. And then I have one back here that you can fit your cell phone in. So there's pockets like that. And there's a few other little pockets with little covers that you can put stuff in. But I definitely suggest maybe making this pocket a little bit bigger to put a 32 ounce bottle and maybe add another pocket that's just a large pocket where you can fit microfiber towels or other tools in just a little bit of a bigger pocket and have them slung lower like this. They uh, tend to be a little bit more user friendly if they are slung lower like this. But overall, really nice, heavy constructed belt. And you also have the little cover over the big clip here. So that is going to protect from that plastic hitting any of the paint and damaging anything. So overall, really well constructed belt. So we're going to be playing around with some waxes and some polishes today. So basically these are gonna be some standard cleaner type polishing waxes that you can use. Super easy to get your hands on. In fact, the finishing wax from Meguiar's is one of my favorites because it's so cheap and it's so user friendly. You can work outside in full sun in a black car in the heat and humidity and still get amazing results from this wax. Now we're currently testing some of the waxes from Extreme Solutions. So we have their Elite Gold Polish. We also have a new one, their Magnum Wax. So Let's play around with their Magnum Wax. So guys, I'm all set up with the polisher. I have the Detailer's Cord Snap attached to my shirt collar up here because it's going around my back and that way the cord is not gonna hit the paint. So I have the other Detailer Cord Snap snapped on right here. So this keeps everything behind my back here and not hitting the paint. So I centered the little finishing pad here. Let's shake up the product. I'm gonna put 
that much on. Just a small amount, because this is basically just a wax. And I'm just going to hit the side panel here and show you how the machine works. GoPro, start recording. This is really difficult to put on with one hand. Okay, there we go. All right, so let's show you this thing in action. I'm gonna put it down to three. And the button is really nice. And that's it. Very simple. We'll let it sit there for a minute and then we'll wipe it off. So it had a minute or so to sit there and now we'll just wipe off the rest of the residue and it's nice and slick. And we'll check out the water performance on it in just a moment. Nice and slick. So this machine very easy to use, entry level, great polisher for applying wax. You can polish with it and you can also correct paint with it. We'll show you how to do that in later videos because this thing is pretty powerful and you can do a lot with it. So that's how I machine apply waxes or sealants onto paint. And even if you're applying an all-in-one like 3D Speed or Sealant Squeal from Lithium, any of those all-in-ones, you can use a pad like this or step it up to a polishing pad and go a little bit slower, a little bit more precise, and get a little bit more cutting power from it. But this is just wax application, super easy and effective using a great entry level polisher. And that, my friends, is how you make a French press cappuccino. Eh, sort of. It's my own kind of thing that I do, so. Ah, oh, that's good. Yum. That's good stuff. Thank you, Jason and Greg from Chicago Auto Pros and Car Supplies Warehouse for sending me that delicious San Diego coffee. It is awesome. Now you started me in a new trend. I had to get a French press and a grinder and a water kettle and all this stuff to make your fancy coffee. It's delicious. So the little Max Shine polisher for 90 bucks. I'm loving this thing. It is great. It does seem a little bit heavier than the Porter cable. I don't know. I don't know why. Maybe it just seems that way to me just because I'm so used to the Porter cable. Anything different is just going to feel a little bit different in my hands. When I plugged it in for the first time, I thought, yikes, this thing is kind of loud, but you know, it's a polisher. It's going to be loud no matter what. So I think the Porter cable is a little bit more silent. I mean, you're splitting hairs when you talk about that. Okay, so now I have both polishers here and side by side, this thing is bigger. And as far as weight, I guess it's about the same. It just feels maybe a little bit more top heavy on this towards the, the front end. It feels a little bit more heavy. As far as the speeds, I'm gonna crank the Max Shine down to one and same with the Porter Cable and turn them both on and see what they sound like. So here's the Max Shine. Here's the Porter Cable. What do you guys think? Did you notice the difference? This seems slightly less noisy. This is just a little bit more noisy. So let's crank it up all the way to six on both machines and I'll turn the Max Shine one on first. 
Ooh, man, that's powerful. And then port cable. Okay, so this thing is more powerful. It is a 7.5 amp and the port cable is only a 4.5 amp. You are getting more juice, more power to this machine. That's why it does feel a little bit more substantial. Pros and cons to both. This is cheaper, this is more expensive. You can get your hands on either of these easily. You can go to the links down below to Amazon and purchase these. This one, slightly more noisy, but of course it is more powerful, so you're going to get a little bit more noise out of it because it is more powerful. This is just slightly um, less noisy, so uh, you do have that. And as far as the feel of them, they both feel well balanced, even though the balance on this seems to be more center, this more top heavy, but that's okay. You get the longer um, body on this, so I actually can get a lot of nice movement out of this going onto the top of the vehicle, on the roof, and hold it really, really comfortably. So I do like that. So we'll do videos later on this showing you the power that it has to be able to correct paint. Can it do it? We'll find out. Oh, that coffee though. Whew. Okay, so let's talk about the Magnum Wax from Extreme Solutions. Now, this stuff is really, really nice. I actually used it on a black BMW in the full sun. Granted, it wasn't super hot out or humid, but I machine applied it like you saw me do to our own vehicle here on the fender, and it, and it wipes off really, really nice. So no problems at all with the application or the wipe off via machine. However, when applying it by hand, sometimes waxes act a little funny. Sometimes sealants do that too. Machine applying waxes and sealants is so much more efficient. The polishing action that you get from the pad itself, the mechanical action from the pad, does heat up the paint and the waxes and the sealants just a little bit, and I feel that it integrates it better into the paint because you do have that mechanical action from the pad, and I think that it applies so much more efficiently thinner and much, much better than by hand. That's just my personal opinion. That's just what I've found throughout the years when waxing or applying sealants onto cars is doing it by machine is just so much better. Give it a try. If you're you know, old fashioned, if you'd like to do it uh, by hand, that's up to you. If you're in your garage and that's something enjoyable and therapeutic for you, perfect, continue to do it. But realize some waxes like this one, for some reason doesn't like hand application Machine application, no problem. But you know, if you're doing it by hand in those small areas like I usually do, then just use a little bit of quick detailer and wipe off any of the uh, hard to remove residue. That's not a big deal. All it's doing is just not wiping off completely because maybe it's just over applied a little bit too thick. So just use a quick detailer and wipe it off. Not a problem at all. But so far, I'm loving this stuff. It smells really nice too. Kind of like a nice cherry scent to it. So appropriate color and smell combination. And uh, for our mobile details, I'm loving this stuff. So check it out down below. I'll have links to this stuff as well as to, ooh, that was a close one, as well as to the finishing wax and their Elite Gold Polish, which kind of acts the same way as the Magnum Wax. It is basically a cleaner wax and all in one. It can polish and leave behind a nice durable wax. And this stuff also smells really nice. It's like bananas, yellow, bananas. Brilliant. All right, guys, so check out the products down below if you're interested in some of those waxes. I recommend these waxes because I use them on a daily basis in our mobile detailing jobs. So we are out in the elements, out in the sun and the heat and working on all sorts of different vehicles. We're not working on super high-end vehicles. We're working on daily drivers and wrecked vehicles sometimes. These waxes perform very well in those instances. In a shop environment, maybe you want to use something a little bit more fancy. So you can use the lithium products. These are really, really nice products. They're a little bit more pricey, but I consider them more like boutique items. They do perform very, very well. Now, I love to use all sorts of different products. I'll use products that are very affordable, what some guys will say cheap. I just consider them affordable, like the Meguiar's Finishing Wax. Super cheap stuff, but it does the job and it does it very well. But I'll leave links to all the different products that you want to purchase down below. I'll have them go to either Amazon or Car Supplies Warehouse where you can buy a ton of stuff. All right, guys, that's enough blabbing. So hope you enjoyed the video. Again, it's our weekend wash where we talk to you guys 
wash the vehicle, test some products, and just enjoy the whole detailing process. So thank you for watching, guys. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, give it a thumbs up, like it, share with others who may enjoy it or benefit from it. Don't forget to subscribe and click that bell. That way you get notifications each time these videos drop each week and you don't miss stuff. And if you want to learn how to make some amazing coffee, I'll have all the products down below if you are a coffee aficionado. Aficionado? Aficionado? I don't even know how to say that word anymore. If you're a coffee snob, then check out the coffee down below. You can pick up the French press and all that stuff. And those things are going to last you a lifetime and you can make amazing brewed coffee. All right, guys, that's it for today. We'll see you next time. Have a great week. Oh, and if you want to check out what this product is right here, the last coat black ice, what is it? We'll show you in later videos. Stay tuned.